to reflect major recent changes on the ground, we've gone ahead with an intermediate update of the apolitical world map. It has to be noted that the apolitical world map is updated to reflect border changes on the ground, since that is the purpose and function of the map. However, this should not be construed as offering any support for Russian actions. It's simply to help illustrate the physical situation on the ground at a given time. In response to Ukraine's battlefield advances, Russia has announced geopolitical moves of its own. Let's take a quick opportunity and review what's gone on over the past few weeks and what it could mean for where the situation is headed. Ever since the start of the current Russian operations in Ukraine back in February, there's long been an assumption that this was all eventually headed for sham referendums conducted by Russia on territory it occupies for the purpose of either setting up Russian puppet republics like those in Donetsk and Luhansk or for the purpose of annexing territory directly to Russia like in Crimea. Despite rumors of annexation referendums floating throughout the first few months of the war, some of which we covered, the word from Russia and its collaborationist authorities seemed to be that these referendums would only take place once the fighting had ended, presumably in Russian victory. In late August, with the start of Ukraine's counteroffensive in Kherson, which has slowly but steadily continued to grind on, things started to become more fluid. The situation only became more up in the air in early September with the large-scale success of Ukraine's rapid new counteroffensive near Kharkiv. This all put immense political pressure on the Putin regime in Moscow and prompted geopolitical countermoves. The first reference to so-called referendums in the current context came on September 5th. The Moscow-installed authorities of the Russian Civil Military Administration of Kherson announced that a planned referendum on joining Russia had been postponed due to reverses on the front line, a rare admission from any Kremlin-backed figure. The other unusual thing about this statement was that no referendum date had as of yet been publicly announced. Various dates in September, October, and November had been thrown around by the Russian authorities in the occupied regions, but whatever the plan had been, it was clear that the Ukrainian counteroffensive had disrupted it, at least in Kherson. Then, suddenly, on September 20th, official announcements were put out by the Luhansk People's Republic, the Donetsk People's Republic, and the Kherson Civil Military Administration, each declaring their region's intent to hold a referendum between September 23rd and 27th on the topic of joining the Russian Federation. It quickly became clear that this was connected to Russia's long-rumored military mobilization. Although some conscripts, mainly from their Ukraine puppet states and far-flung non-ethnic Russian regions like Beryasha and Chechnya, had been unofficially used by Russia, both in the current war and going back to 2014, the bulk of the Russian army in Ukraine consisted of professional soldiers. Now, however, amidst military setbacks, the Putin regime announced a, quote, partial mobilization on September 21st, the day after three of the occupied regions had announced their referendums. The Kremlin could now posture the mobilization as, quote, defending the homeland, also opening up the possibility of other escalation. To that end, Vladimir Putin, along with several of his top officials, have discussed nuclear weapon use in recent days, saying that once the territory is annexed, it will come under the full protection of the Russian nuclear umbrella. However, Ukraine and its backers have stated that this will not change anything in regards to their strategy, and if anything, kills off any remaining prospect at negotiations. The mobilization itself has turned into an entire saga of its own, with Kremlin-appointed regional governors responsible for the call-up of troops. Many more remote towns and villages had not just those of conscript age or with military experience drafted, but in fact the entire male population, including the old and the infirm, who were essentially kidnapped for military service. This has led to a mass exodus out of Russia and the eventual closing of its borders. Nearly half a million people have already fled since September 21st as of the making of this video, and still many thousands more were denied the ability to leave. The rollout of the mobilization has been such a debacle that Vladimir Putin was forced to release a public message saying that all those mistakenly conscripted should be sent back home. It remains to be seen whether that'll actually happen or whether this apology is just an attempt to publicly save face. The Russian authorities in Zaporizhia Oblast announced their intent to hold a so-called referendum on joining Russia, making it a clean sweep of the occupied territories, aside from small remaining occupied portions of Kharkiv and Mykolaiv. 
By the end of September 27th, the results were in. As expected, the announced results showed all four regions voting overwhelmingly to join Russia, including 99%. However, just as in Crimea, these are essentially considered by the outside world to be referendums at gunpoint, and recognition does not appear to be forthcoming even from some of Russia's closest allies. Meanwhile, instead of cowing Russia's enemies, it's instead inspired them to double down, with Ukraine vowing to reconquer all of its pre-2014 territory, and America, Britain, Poland, and others have expressed continued support for Ukraine's position. The impending Russian annexations and nuclear threats essentially eliminate the possibility of a negotiated settlement, the prospects for which were already slim. On Friday, September 30th, Vladimir Putin made a major national address, signing decrees on the annexation of the territories and sending it to Russia's State Duma and Federation Council, effectively a rubber stamp parliament, for approval. With that formality, Russia officially annexes the territory. However, the story isn't done yet as the war continues to rage, and Ukraine continues with its counteroffensives, maintaining the initiative. Just as Ukraine claims all the land that it controlled prior to 2014, with these annexations, Russia now claims the parts it does not control of the added regions, including the territories claimed by the Donetsk and Luhansk puppet states since 2014, both of which now accede to the Russian Federation itself. So the war is far from over, and if anything, this is an escalation. Our thoughts are, of course, with the countless civilians affected. We'll continue to follow developments here on the channel. Make sure you're subscribed, hit that bell button, like this video, and comment down below. If you can, please donate on Patreon. Also, check out the map that forms the basis for these videos at apoliticalworldmap.org. For now, thank you so much for watching. I'm Alex. I am out.